Hello viewers, welcome to JS and RS solution channel. Hope you are doing very great. This is the third part of the land use and land cover change prediction tutorial series. In the previous two tutorials, you have learned how to prepare a land use and land cover map and also how to make variables for predicting future land use and land cover using ArcGIS. I hope you enjoyed the previous two tutorials in this series and uh, hope you will learn and enjoy this part as well. If you have any queries regarding land use and land cover prediction, feel free to write your uh, questions in the comments box. I will try to help you out. So let's start today's tutorial. First, uh, open uh, trade set software. You will get this window, and after that, go to projects and then right click and uh, create new project folder and go to your PC and uh, create a folder. You can give a name as prediction or uh, as what you want then click here and the resource folder just add uh, the data then click ok and in the working folder add uh, the folder results I mean in your results will be saved in this folder and then go to file and uh, refresh double click on your data folder so you will see here uh, your data so I have already prepared a land cover map for uh, two years 1986 and 1994 so here you can see the true land cover map and also I have created a variables map like distance from disturbance distance from uh, roads distance from streams distance from urban city center elevation roads slopes as well I have already uploaded uh, two videos uh, in my channel uh, as a part of this uh, prediction tutorial series uh, one is uh, how to prepare land use and land cover map and another one is how to prepare uh, variable maps so if you guys did not watch that video you can check it out from this channel anyway uh, go to land change modeler you will see uh, the several tabs change analysis transition potential and uh, so on you will see over here uh, lcm session parameters so create new session and uh, you can give it a name i'm writing uh, lcm1 and then add earlier land cover image so in my case uh, the earlier land cover image is 1986 so i'm adding that and uh, later land cover image so i have uh, prepared 1994 land cover map from a study area and here basis uh, road layers so i'm adding uh, basis uh, road layer roads then click ok then elevation model so i'm adding elevation and uh, a special palette land cover 86 then click uh, continue then you will get this window change analysis 
gain and losses between 1986 and 1994 so you will see the gain and losses between 1986 and 1994 you can also uh, also change the units as a square kilometer or hectares gain and losses by category net change by category net change between these two years and contributors to net change experienced by uh, different land classes uh, change maps uh, you will see uh, some uh, items like map gain losses in map the transition from exchange between so output name uh, i'm going to give it a name as change and ignore transition less than hundred thousands so you can see the seven transition seven different land cover transitions have taken place in the study area between 1984 to 1994 so if i change the threshold value uh, thousands from five thousands then you will see the changes special trend of chains so map a special trend from deciduous mature forest to anthropogenic disturbances click map trend if i change the order of polynomial first then you will see the linear trend I only want to model most probable transition therefore I will ignore transition less than 500 hectares when I use this threshold only four transition remains I need to decide what transition sub model to use in my model I currently have four transition based on my knowledge of the study area i know the same variables are driving all of this transition and uh, hence i should group this four transition into a single sub model transition sub model structure sub model uh, being evaluated as anthropogenic disturbance uh, so you have to add here your variables and uh, role uh, it will be uh, static Here I will add uh, my six variables one by one.
click here and add your variables first i will add uh, distance from disturbance as i have six uh, variables i will add all of them here After adding all the variable, then uh, go to run transition sub model. So here you can see a ML, MLP neural network simoet and logistic regression. Simoet and logistic uh, regression can only be used to model one transition at a time, such that each transition must also have its own sub model. MLP can use for multiple transition at once uh, as my sub model have four uh, transitions I will uh, use the MLP method then you can see MLP neural network parameters so keep these parameters as default You will get this on uh, like model skill breakdown by transition persistence weight between uh, hidden layers the sensitivity of model to forcing independent variables to be constant uh, also uh, you will get uh, the accuracy and the skill measures yeah. And click create transition potential uh, to make the potential uh, transition image for your uh, sub model. Change uh, demand modeling. So I will predict for uh, 2000 here as uh, I have uh, the image for 1986 and 1994. Then change allocation change allocation uh, panel allow you to choose how many stages you want your prediction to be broken into then click run model to create your land cover prediction uh, you will get two outputs uh, uh, from the left side uh, the soft prediction means the vulnerability of each Peak gel to transition to a different uh, land cover class during the time period you uh, specified. Areas in red uh, have a high potential transition. And in the right uh, images, the hard prediction uh, predicts a specific land cover class for its peak gels. You can also evaluate the accuracy of your uh, prediction using the validation tab. So here is our projected land cover for 2000. You can calculate the area of changes.
hope you enjoyed today's tutorial uh, please like and subscribe my channel and thank you for watching